Welcome to Gun Guides, where I show you how to get, how to use, and how to master every gun family in Spiral Knights. In this series, I'll be helping you, the starting gunner, to become the gunning master that you always dreamt of being. This video is a precursor to the main series, as this video serves to teach mechanics that apply to every single family of guns and are worth mastering, or at least becoming familiar with. The first section of this video will be covering the most fundamental techniques of gunning. As the video goes on, the techniques will become more and more complicated. While I only explain how these mechanics can help gunners, sword players can use these mechanics as well. The first technique is shield bumping. This isn't really a technique that's unique to the gunner, but it's a must know. The shield bump is very easy to pull off. Pressing your shield button while near an enemy will knock them back a certain distance. This will only work if your shield isn't broken. Your shield will automatically shield bump after taking damage as well. Shield bumping is the easiest way for a gunner to create space from approaching enemies, as it has no cooldown and is very easy to do. As a side note, some enemies like zombies can be pushed very easily from a shield bump. Meanwhile, a large enemy, such as a Trojan, will only budge a small amount. Dashing in Spiral Knights is a great tool to use to traverse levels because it makes the knight move faster for a short while. The dash has a 5 tile range and an 8 second cooldown. More importantly, this dash shares similarities to certain dashes from other games, like Commando's Tactical Dive from Risk of Rain, or Dodge Rolling from Enter the Gungeon. Dashing in Spiral Knights makes you immune to almost all damage. From a Devlight projectile, a Halwitzer skull, shankles, or even explosive blocks. Despite this, the dash is defeated by ground traps and rockets as seen in Built to Destroy. Dashing will also expose a knight from Masquerade invisibility. On top of all of this, dashing also removes every enemy's aggro from yourself, granting some breathing room if needed. Dashing also doesn't require you to move in order to get any of the upsides. Dashing into a wall to quickly dodge an attack is a very useful technique for gunners, especially if you find yourself corner trapped. Here, I dash to dodge the Trojan swing, and while he has lost aggro, I invis and shield bump to escape. Possibly the least known but most important mechanic for gunners is shield charging. A normal charge would look something like this. The player fires a basic attack and then charges the weapon. This can be greatly optimized by shield charging. First, raise your shield. Then, after the shield is raised, hold attack. Shortly after starting to hold attack, lower your shield. Make sure that attack is still being held. The last step is now to mash the shield button until your knight charges the weapon, and voila, you've done your first shield charge. This mechanic is best to be practiced as much as possible, because not having to stand still and wait for a lengthy auto attack to go off is crucial when blitzing an important target or setting up an iron slug attack. Tied in closely to shield charging is charge chaining. The most basic type of charge chaining is holding the attack button during a charge attack. Your knight will immediately start another charge after releasing the last one. Charge chaining can also be done after a dash, after using a sprite ability, after using a usable, or after reviving. Combining charge chaining with shield charging greatly increases a gunner's damage output, movement, and survivability. Let's move on to some of the more advanced techniques, starting with flash charges. Flash charging is having your attack speed stat change during an attack animation. A change in attack speed can be achieved through Frenzied Firestorm or the Masquerade Deadly Cloak. Releasing a charge or an auto attack during a flash charge will, usually, add some very buggy effects to the weapon, giving a deeper level of gameplay to each family of guns. You okay, Vanna? I'm sure he's just napping. These effects will be covered in the specific videos for each family of guns. Bonus fact, stun also lowers attack speed, 
so attacking when stun wears off will flash your attack as well. The last step to truly mastering the art of gunning is weapon switching. The reason weapon switching is crucial is because it avoids the deadly reload. A gunner's worst enemy is not being able to strafe, dash, or shield. Reloading does all of that, plus it decreases overall attack speed. To remedy this, weapon switching is required. Switching requires a ton of practice and patience on the gunner's part when first learning, but eventually muscle memory will kick in. The most basic way to weapon switch is as follows. So in order to skip our reload, we have to swap to a different weapon altogether after shooting, resetting the ammo count. For this demo, we'll be calling the Mixmaster Weapon A and the Big Angry Bomb Weapon B, and the blue dots will represent the mixer's ammo. The basic idea is that the player must shoot with Weapon A and then switch to Weapon B. This switch off of Weapon A reloads it. We then switch back to Weapon A and fire again. To break it down further, while an attack is being made, hold shield. You'll notice that the shield will appear at the earliest possible frame. Many players refer to this as the shield cancel, as it cuts down on useless animations. Practice it, as it is used in swapping all the time. To take it one step further, make your swap to weapon B after shield cancelling. Easy right? It is. Practice is key, and with enough of it, any gunner can make use of this technique. To recap, attack and shield cancel, swap to and from weapon B to reload, and repeat. This marks the end of my gunning mechanics video. Did you think I missed an important trick? If so, let me know. The next video in this series will be focused on the Alchemer family of guns.